Matt, I know you're really excited to talk about this one. We have uh, our hot topic tonight, uh, some news that was announced earlier this week. In summer of 2025, when the NASCAR Cup Series returns to TNT, NASCAR will debut a brand new in-season tournament. This bracket-style tournament is a similar concept to the NBA's in-season tournament, which is designed to generate more storylines in the regular season, making a typically mundane part of the schedule more meaningful and interesting. Now, the final three races that air on Amazon Prime leading into TNT's coverage will set the seating for a tournament, the top 32 drivers from those races, so almost all of the chartered entries airing on Prime Video. They will qualify for the in-season tournament that starts with TNT's first race. Seating will be determined by each driver's best finish in the three Prime Video races that are a part of this, with tiebreakers determined by the next best finish, followed by season points position. The drivers will compete head-to-head -head with the highest finishing driver advancing over five rounds, with the winner of the in-season tournament winning $1 million. Now, as I said, this is a similar concept to the NBA's in-season tournament, but a lot of people are giving credit to Denny Hamlin for his bracket challenge and pushing an idea like this for NASCAR. Now, on X, Hamlin said that this is such a win for the sport and drivers because many storylines will be made during this five-week stretch. He went on, uh, later went on Sirius XM NASCAR radio and said he didn't necessarily need credit for this idea, but thinks his job is to make the sport better and believes this idea can really take off. Graphic on your screen, courtesy of NASCAR themselves. Matt, do you view the new NASCAR in-season tournament as a good, innovative idea to make the summer stretch more interesting, or do you view it as totally unnecessary? I've lessened my comments, perhaps, thinking about it today, to what I initially said yesterday when this rolled out yesterday uh, lunchtime, your time. Uh, it is still a bit unnecessary. Call me a purist, but the season runs from February until November, playoffs or not, uh, as I've got massive hair drama going on, uh, playoffs or not. Um, but why do we have to have this in the middle? Is the season that boring and that people can't keep up with a points battle or a playoff grid battle? We've already got one grid. Why do we need another bracket slash grid going on at the same time? It's, it just, I don't know. I just don't, I just, I just don't think it's necessary. What, what we're going to get to in, I know we've had the announcement that Atlanta is going to be the first race that's been announced today. Uh, when we get to whatever ends up being the final race where the two guys racing for the lead aren't the two guys left in the bracket and we'll have to cut away to a battle between two guys running in 14th and 17th to make sure whoever wins a bracket challenge for a million dollars of which they are racing for this weekend in one single race at North Wilkesboro for the All-Star Race on Sunday night uh, when this is spread over four or five weeks. I just, I know this is obviously with the new TV stuff coming in next year, it is uh, to try and get more people locked onto these new TV uh, outputs with Amazon and TNT. I just don't think that this is needed when, again, you look at the last few weeks of the Cup Series, I know we're not in this position of being in the, what you would call the summer stretch quite yet, but we've had just some awesome racing over the last couple of weeks. Why do we need to pit people against each other for a finish? And if that first race is going to be at Atlanta, where it looks like it's going to be, we could have all manner of the favourites knocked out if we get a big crash in the Atlanta race in the first race of this whole bracket challenge. I just don't think it's very necessary. And I like my championship to be run without gimmicks, perhaps you can call the playoffs and the chase a gimmick if you like. Perhaps it is a kind of after all this time we've got used to it. Um, I, I just don't, just really don't think this is something to go with. Maybe it'll just be a one year deal. Um, but obviously everyone clocked onto Denny's bracket challenge a little bit last year and he's got his other one coming up in a couple of weeks. It's been announced as well today. So we've got the unofficial one again this year before the uh, proper official one coming in 25. You know, Matt, I, I see Matthew Owens is here in the chat room. I'm wondering if we can uh, pull his comments up here in a bit. But uh, I, I'll, I'll say the same thing that I told him on a, an episode of my podcast we taped yesterday. I've been very busy this week. I'm hoping to get that up in the next uh, couple of days here and get that edited and everything. But I don't know that I disagree with anything you said. I just don't share the outrage uh, that you and, and Matthew were uh, sharing when this was first announced. And I'll get to the reason why in just a second. Here's Matthew's comments tonight. Building storylines is a heck of a line. 
in what way is the NASCAR regular season lacking in entertainment? And it goes on here. Uh, I think we've got a couple more. Winning it, winning a meaningless tournament in a non-stick and ball sport apparently is a better storyline than trying to position yourself into the most important time of the season. And all these great battles, photo finishes, and wonderful competition, and it's not compelling enough. Again, I, I don't disagree with any of that. But my thing is, I think all of my outrage has been used up in the last 20 years over the chase slash playoffs and the introduction of stage racing, which is basically periods or quarters or whatever. Uh, I'm not convinced that those, that the name isn't going to change at some point. Cause we changed the chase to the playoffs. We changed green, white checkers to overtime. And despite the fact that Steve Phelps was quoted a few years ago as saying, we'll keep everything unique to our sport. We don't need to market this as a game seven moment. <laughs> the, the fact that you've changed the names of two other rules that you've introduced into the sport say otherwise, but, you know, I, I just I think that I've been so frustrated with that that I have no frustration left for this. And, um, you know, again, I think that there was a tweet from Chesapeake Diecast. I brought this up in my podcast yesterday. I'll bring it up here again. Uh, I, th- I thought he hit the nail right on the head. I, I like the in-season tournament more than the playoffs, and I don't think we need both. So it, to me, at the bare minimum, this isn't something that determines our champion. It's a nice little... Bonus payday, I guess, if a million, I know, I know a million dollars doesn't go nearly as far as it used to, but, you know, it, it, it's going to draw some storylines and engagement and it might be a nice bonus for people to talk about. But I, I appreciate that it doesn't, I don't think anybody's going to elevate this. You know, people make a joke about the, the Lakers raising their in-season tournament banner, you know, that even, even then I think was kind of blown out of proportion because the year on the banner is a lot smaller. They only have one banner so that if they win it again, it's just the one banner with all the years rather than individual banners for championships. Nobody's going to put this on the same level as winning a championship. So I I, I guess to, to sum it all up, is it necessary? Absolutely not. Do I think brackets work in a sport as chaotic as auto racing, particularly when the first race is Atlanta of all places? And we'll get into that here in just a second. But no, no, of course, I would prefer that we not introduce this. I think it's gimmicky. I don't think it's necessary at all. I'm just so apathetic at this point that I'm just like, you know, whatever. You know, if you if you have a new media partner coming in, I, I think if there's any time to introduce something like this, give Turner and, and Amazon something to highlight and promote and hype up their coverage, you know, so be it. You know, you, you can go ahead and have this. I would prefer that you transfer the bracket style tournament that we have in this sport over to something like this, and we can go back to a regular season points format. But I'm told that, uh, you know, if we do that, we will have a champion crown with two races to go and we won't have enough compelling storylines for the end of the year. So I guess uh, I guess that's that, but well, I just I, I don't share the outrage here. That's just that's how I'm feeling about it. It's just kind no, of um, and to my point at the top, I more I thought about it since this came out 24 plus hours ago. I wasn't as a wasn't as hair on fire as I perhaps was as soon as the uh, news was dropped yesterday. Adam says I'm not a fan of this season tournament either. Some NASCAR fans will be turned off, and therein lies they need to get people to get it. The people that go, oh, well, I'm not watching stuff on the stream to get on board with Amazon Prime perhaps next year and have something, a carrot dangled, perhaps. Maybe this is my Europeanness in me, let's say, whereas obviously you've got your basketball stuff and the obviously March Madness, for instance, is obviously built off the bracket and stuff. If we'd had in the Premier League this season here in the UK, the December battle for points or something, some madness over the Christmas January period, doesn't matter because we've still got the championship coming down to two points difference at the end of the season on Sunday between Man City and Arsenal, which is producing all of the storylines, much like four people racing for a championship at Phoenix at the end of the season. I just, I just F1 shouldn't have sprint races. NASCAR perhaps shouldn't have a playoff. IndyCar hasn't got double points for the 500 and still no one talks about the championship in May. I just, maybe that's just my it goes from here to here and at the end we crown the champ. I know this is, doesn't have anything to do with the championship for say, and it's kind of this separate thing rolling on, on the side, but I, I just wouldn't would like perhaps the distraction of it in the summer when we could be looking at the points battle. Yeah. And, and I want to be clear to people watching and people that follow me, you know, it, it's not just a NASCAR thing. And I talked about this last night with Matthew too, you know, I'd have no problem if the, team with the best record in the American League and the best record in the National League and Major League Baseball, let's just take them straight to the World Series. You know, we play 162 games. There's no need for that. Matt, you brought up the uh, Premier League, Premier League 
you know, mm. for, for soccer um, and, the, and the title fight between Arsenal and Man City. I've been keeping an eye on that. And, uh, you know, I think that's part of why I've gotten into soccer over the last couple of years and specifically uh, the, the Premier League because there are no playoffs and yet you still have a compelling championship fight. There are still storylines for all sorts of different clinching scenarios for winning a draw, a loss or whatever for either team. And, you know, over, over here on the American side of things, you know, I, I think there's an argument to be made. I don't think a lot of fans make it. The, the MLS Cup is held in much higher prestige than the Supporters' Shield. But And I will make this argument because the Union have a Supporters' Shield. They don't have an MLS <laughs> Cup. They were about two minutes away from winning one. And then Gareth Bale yeah. marched down the field and did something incredible. But I'm going to go on and on about that. It's not a soccer show. It's a racing show. But, you know, there, I think there's an argument to be made that the Supporters' Shield is more indicative of full season, regular season success over the course of a full year as it is a knockout playoff style or bracket style playoff rather uh, to, to determine a champion that way. So, you know, it's it's a consistent view that I've held all across the board that I would like to see importance placed in the regular season. I think if you do that, you don't need an in-season tournament like this. So I think it's rather just a symptom of the fact that we've had a playoff system for 20 years. And now, you know, we, we kind of have an idea, all the strong championship contenders, probably have won a race by the time we get to the summer. We have an idea because again, you know, it's, it's a symptom that's infecting all pretty much all sports right now. There's, there's no need for 16 drivers to be in the playoffs, right? You know, no disrespect to Ricky Stenhouse jr. But Dane wouldn't think after he won the Daytona 500 last year, like, Oh, he's in the playoffs now. He's a real championship contender folks. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, it's just, it, it takes up a spot on the playoff grid. He's, I mean, maybe he has a solid first round and gets into the second round, but you know, it's it's very unlikely that he's going to the championship for much less actually winning the thing. So, you know, I, I again, I think that if you didn't have a playoff system, this wouldn't be necessary. But because you have it, you know, most of the drivers that are going to be true title contenders, they've won their way in by now. And it's the summer months. We're all just kind of waiting to get to the playoffs and we're figuring out who's going to be in, who's going to be out in those final seats at this point. But again, like I said, if, if you're going to do it, I prefer you have your bracket style, you know, for lack of, I'm, I'm sorry, I know people don't like this word, but your gimmick for lack of better terms in the summer months, then it be what actually determines the champion. And I think oh, that that's, sure. that's just where I fall on this. And so that's why it doesn't bother me as much as people might think, given how staunchly opposed I am uh, to the playoff system. Before we move on, uh, Matthew adding here, what happens if we get the 25 schedule in one of these races is the Brickyard 400. You mean to tell me we'll all care more about the bracket than who's going to win in Indianapolis? Well, you know, again, I, I think that's that's an important part of it as well. Is what what races are we going to have here as a part of this tournament? I think those need to be strategically chosen. I don't think Crown Jewel should be any of those. Mm -hmm. um, to Matthew's point here, you know, I, I I would not want the battle for fifth teams, which might determine a million dollar jackpot winner because of this bracket, to take precedent over or precedence rather over who's going to win. Uh, one of the biggest races of the year on the Indianapolis Oval. So I think that's that's a very important point that he's brought up here. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see, and we've had one potential piece of that schedule shuffle happen today with the Atlanta thing, but our race is going to be shuffled around here to accommodate the bracket because you don't want to have the final, the final race of it at a crown jewel, be it Indy, be it the Bristol night race, be it the Daytona, summer race that kind of thing yeah well let's move on here there's another uh piece of this puzzle obviously there's a lot of pieces to this puzzle that still have to come into place in terms of what the coverage is going to look like next year what this entire tournament is going to look like but we have been getting some updates this week as well amazon prime's first cup series race this has long been rumored fans trying to piece the schedule together with the dates and we now have confirmation it's going to be the coca-cola 600 on may 25th 2025 They'll also be producing a new four-part documentary coming in 2025 called Earnhardt. And earlier today was announced that TNT's first race back will be at Atlanta Motor Speedway on Saturday, June 28th, 2025, under the lights. It's fitting in some ways because TNT and Turner's based in Atlanta, so they'll kick off NASCAR return in their own backyard. But that also means, Matt, to the point that you were making, that the in-season tournament is kicking off at a drafting super speedway-style chaotic racetrack. So... What do you think? Is it a good idea to put one of NASCAR's crown jewel races on a streaming service in prime video? And how do you feel about that track in Atlanta kicking off TNT's return and thus the in-season tournament? 
well, again, to your Stenhouse point from before, I'm not sure any of us perhaps going into Atlanta week would have picked Daniel Suarez to win in uh, in the spring. So yeah, we, it was a fairly clean race in terms of accidents. We had that one early on, but um, it can produce people who don't like that style of racing going to the back of the field and then perhaps not coming back through. So their bracket could potentially be over on week one. Um, I, to the, the scheduling and sort of TV point of this, um, good for Amazon to have a crown jewel, if you would call it that. I guess people do. I I think I've made my point on this clear on m multiple outlets that I'm not a fan of the Coke 600 and we, it, we should not be going 600 miles with these cars that can clearly do 2,000 miles without breaking down th at this point. But they've got themselves a big race to come in and woo people you can watch the monaco grand prix and indy uh during the day and then you can fire up your uh prime your brand spanky new prime subscription next year for people that have got it and watch uh watch the 600 into the evening so obviously that is a big race for you guys it's a big one of the big races of the year on memorial day weekend uh they've got themselves a good one there to kick off that part of the year be a shame for for again back to my point from before uh season long running thing but for fox not to have it um so i guess well, again more scheduled stuff to come up i guess you would say that fox will end their coverage of the year with the all-star race if that's the way we're going with things um but uh yeah we'll have to wait and see how more scheduling runs through good this year of course last year we had the schedule very late uh hopefully this uh leads to because we do like a good bit of calendar news uh, the schedule coming out fairly more sooner than it did last year. Yeah, you know, I, again, I, I think I kind of hinted at this in the previous part of his segment, but um, I, I have, again, limited problems with the in-season tournament. It's just kind of whatever to me at this point, but I have a massive problem with putting the first round at a track like Atlanta because I think it just it, it leaves the door wide open um, you know, you're just asking for all sorts of upsets and chaos and controversy. And, um, you know, you, you do have some uh, added potential for a driver that you don't normally see running up front as often uh, as some of the superstars of a sport that might, you know, be able to, even if it's not a win. And, I, and you know, nothing against Daniel Suarez, because I know he obviously got the win at Sonoma and he's driving for a solid team in, in track house. But, you know, there, he has been behind uh, Ross Chastain a little bit in terms of performance. And I think there were some questions. It sounds like now they're, they're committed to his future, but um, you know, to your point, Matt, I don't think very many of us were expecting him to go out and win uh, the second points race of the year uh, in the way that he did. And, you know, if, if that had happened next summer, you know, I mean, it, it completely throws a wrench in this entire bracket here. I mean, I'm just trying to think like, again, I don't like making stick and ball sports comparisons, but I, that that's just, just the direction that the sport is going down right now, or the series rather motorsports is sport NASCAR is its own thing. But, um, you know, imagine if, you know, March Madness was almost completely randomized in the first round and you had two number one seeds go out and three number two seeds uh, go out in the first round and, uh, you know, one number three seed lose. Like, I mean, it, you, you expect in the opening round there to not be too many upsets and the majority of the top seeds would advance here. Like you mentioned, Matt, you know, we, we, we got a relatively clean race, but if what happened on the opening lap happens on the final lap and, you know, you wad 16 cars up and it completely jumbles the running order. And what does that do to the bracket now? I, I think if you want to, if you want to do a bracket like this, you know, you should have different types of tracks, but I don't know that super speedways drafting style tracks should be among them because of how much of a wild card they are. And, and of course it's, it's not a complete wild card because you do have, certain drivers that excel on those types of tracks and that style of racing more than others. But, you know, just one wrong move. It doesn't even have to be your fault. If you're in the front, you can be in a wreck. If you're in the back, you can be in a wreck. So um, it, I, I just think it, it leaves it to be too much of a lottery specific to be anywhere in this tournament rather, but specifically to be uh, kicking off the tournament that I'm not a huge fan of, but you know, maybe that's just, maybe that's what they want. They, 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 they want the chaos. They want the upsets. They want uh, to generate as many crazy storylines as possible. And that's that's probably why they're going with it. I know there's uh, obviously the, the business aspect of it as well with with it being Turner's home race in, in many respects. But that that I'm not a fan of. I'm also obviously not a fan of all the media fragmentation and the world of streaming and price gouging. And, you know, you're, you're hearing 
that Netflix is buying two NFL games for Christmas day now. And that's another subscription that NFL fans are going to have to buy. Like it's, it's just, it's getting out of control, but I do understand that the technology exists and this is the way of the future. But I don't know. I think there's, there's going to be a lot of fans that are not happy with the idea that what's arguably the second or third biggest race of the year is going to be on Amazon prime rather than over the air on Fox. Like it's been for so many years. I think that's, probably not going to be universally well received in its own right either you could also make potentially point and again back to the schedule we don't know what it's going to be fully yet but you could say for someone that isn't or let me how do I phrase this isn't perhaps a strong card in their pack super speedway racing but gets through that first round uh against whoever they might be up against in their bracket and the second race is at Sonoma and they're not very good at, at, at road courses. And you're like, oh, well, we got through the first round, but next week we're against AJ Ormondinger and he'll probably beat us. Or someone like, or Chase Elliott, or someone like that, you know? And then then it's, what was the point? You know, but we'll have to wait, wait and see how the schedule plays out for it. They, they, I, you would think they would have one of all of them, Super Speedway road, uh, road course, a, a short track and a mile and a half in there somewhere perhaps to keep it across all specters of NASCAR circuit, perhaps you, maybe you being that it's going to be in the summer, you'd have to think that maybe Chicago, if it continues, would be part of this too. You know, Matt, you, you brought up Almendinger and just kind of a uh, light bulb went off in my head here. I know we have an owner's playoffs. We have owner's championship standings that we follow. We're still obviously figuring a lot of this out, but it's the top 32 drivers. I don't know. Is there going to be an owner's aspect of this? Because what Colleague does with their 16 car, you know, yeah, if Sonoma's in the same time period next year as it is this year, like, is that one of the three races that determines the seating? And if Almendinger goes out and gets a top five or wins or SVG running part, I mean, who knows what his schedule is going to be next year. But if it's not a, I don't know, like, does that, is that a separate bracket that's going to affect, you know, how part time? Yeah, I mean, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, I, yeah, that's, <laughs> there's that would be uh, that would make an even more uh, complex. I love the owner's championship, don't get me wrong, I think it's important, but if they try to incorporate that into this here, I think that's just a, a whole nother wrinkle that maybe overcomplicates it. And to your point again, probably not necessary. I understand what they're trying to do, they're trying to draw up storylines and create something for you and me and everybody else to talk about, but. I don't no, know. I'm sure I we will when it comes to the, <laughs> this I time next or this time yeah. next year. Or yeah, we will for sure. But I, I think I'd like to think we're good enough at our jobs that we can do that without, mm. again, dare I say it, a gimmick like this to create more storylines. You know, there's there's at least 36 drivers out there every weekend. You know, we there, there's plenty of things to talk about, and I, I'd like to think we we do a pretty good job at telling their stories and yeah. you know highlighting what what deserves to be highlighted here. Uh, real quick before we move on, Matthew Owens will be really interested in the 25 Coke 600 ratings. I continue to hear that NASCAR's audience is old, so let's put a race that'll end at 11.30 on a streaming service. Sure. Well, the counter to that, Matthew, is I hear more people are subscribed to Amazon Prime than they are to cable. The only problem with that is the demographics, like you just mentioned. I think NASCAR's fan base and viewership certainly skews a lot older, and I would think more of those streaming subscribers would probably tend to skew a lot younger. So if the if the majority of the fan base doesn't isn't a part of that demographic, then you know, I don't I don't think that's a stat that really matters in the grand scheme of things. It's where does your audience congregate? And I think for NASCAR it's still network television number one, but cable television, traditional uh TV rather than streaming, I think overall, I don't know. Those those numbers are going to be very interesting, but I don't know. Are, are they contract I, I know if it airs on television they're contractually obligated to put those numbers out i, I know that nbc's gotten away with not publicizing the peacock exclusive indycar races so i i would think given what they've done with the nfl that those numbers would be available to us but we'll have to wait and see i would imagine that if they're worth if they're worth publicizing we we will know about that we, i mean we know 23 million people watch that nfl game but you know with indycar it's oh it was it in line with our projections and we'll we'll leave it at that hmm. Yeah, exactly right. It will be interesting. And the way that NASCAR's ratings have been going this year, let's hope that that does continue on its upward streak. But I guess the way that social media talks about NASCAR's ratings, maybe in the end, they'll have no choice 
uh, in uh, putting them out. I think they're stable right now. I think some races have been up, some races have been down. There's yeah. there's, there's positive momentum. I think we've stopped the bleeding in that sense. It's it's just a matter of, you know, what can we do to try to generate more interest? I think hence what we're seeing right here with this in-season tournament. Will it have the effect that the NASCAR executives wanted to have, though? That's the uh, no pun intended million dollar question here huh. as we uh, as we look forward to 2025. Still a lot to fall into place. And as I mentioned, we will continue to keep up with all of that and Pass that on to you as we uh, continue to react to that as it all comes in. Still over a year uh, before that summer stretch begins for Prime and TNT, so we'll keep our eye on that.